Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Truth Quest. My name is Aaron Moriarty. I will be your host, and we're going to go on a quest for truth together. Yes, we certainly are. And today, friends, we have a special guest for you. I bet you have guessed it by now because you can see him right next to me. It's the one and the only Stephen Anthony Cefalo, artist Hello. extraordinary. Welcome back to the show, Steve. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were muted. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. It's good to be back. Yeah. My second show. Long time. About a year, huh? Yeah, that's right. Something like that. Yeah, I like your yeah, telephone cool. there. Oh, I've, 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 uh, yeah, you've caught me. I've, I've, uh, I've had a little bit of a time travel accident and I'm stuck oh. in the 90s, so I had to call from a pay phone. Oh, you're in the 90s. Oh, wow. Yeah, I found a place at a Waffle House. They always have a phone in the parking lot. Well, it looks waffly nice there. (laughs) I mean, mean, there's probably a lot of people wanting to know how to get back to the 90s or even the 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s. Heck, even the 20s, the roaring 20s would be fine right now, wouldn't it? That's right. Yeah, any any alternative now. Actually, I think... We uh we live in very exciting times. I think yes. I've probably chosen to be in these times. And, and there still are Waffle Houses, actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have loads of them here. But I just remember in the '90s there was always payphones in the parking lots. You could always count on a Waffle House to have a payphone. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Boy, one time uh, my car broke down on me on the highway. This was before cell phones, and. Um, I went to this payphone. The car was on a highway, busy highway, Highway 7 near Minneapolis. And um, I went to this payphone, which was like a, about a half a block away. And I reached my pockets. There's no change in my pockets. And mm-hmm. I went, no. And my head went down. I looked at my feet. I was wearing penny loafers, but I put quarters in them. <laughs> and it took both quarters. But I, I finally, I did get someone to, to come, come and help me. So. That's good luck. Yeah, back then you either, if you broke down on the road, you either had to hold up a, or uh, you had to gas station to to uh, call somebody for help. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. Yeah, or just wait mm-hmm. while your car sat there, unless yeah. you could push it to the side of the road, which I did many times. Yeah. Sometimes you'd wait for hours. So for our guests here, Steve. They might. Oh, and look, Catherine Weiss just gave a 20, uh, a, a very generous super chat. Thank you very much, Catherine Weiss, Philip Oliver, Valak 21, and Jason Roberts and Abby. Hello. Welcome to the show. Steve is an accomplished artist. To say that is to not say enough. This man has artwork hanging in the Guggenheim right now. He is an artist's artist. Uh, he takes realism to a new level. He takes oils and makes them live and breathe. Um, so it's just an honor to have you back here. You know, you're such a good artist, and I, I really got to um, give you a hand for, for, for doing a job on that graphic novel, which is almost done. Let's hear about this. Yeah. I mean, I want to clarify. The, I, there are things that I painted on in the Guggenheim, mm-hmm. a number of things, but... They are not my own uh, intellectual property. <laughs> so, so I painted, uh, I, I was a painter for Jeff Koons uh, twice, uh, two, two different times. And uh, I, may, I worked on Jeff Koons paintings. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, they're not like under my name. But you did it. I did. I worked on the paintings, yeah. So it was like an assembly line. It was like... Um, so I'm picturing like a warehouse of maybe he also does like starving artist people too, doing um, scenes too, maybe. It's an awesome, it's an, it's so much fun. It's actually an incredible environment to work in. I bet. I yeah. bet. Wow. Of, um, okay. But we were, we were talking about, um, you were setting me up for something. <laughs> what were you saying? Uh, oh yeah. Graphic novel. So <clears throat> Yes. Um, 
I just completed uh, page 120 of 120. So the the artwork is is uh, finished, uh, quote unquote. But there there will be some cleanup. So uh, so uh, now that we have time to do so, Jackie, who's helping me out with the artwork, uh, Jackie and I, we are going to be uh, going through every page and um, with a with a fine eye and 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 try to look for inconsistencies um, in terms of the storytelling. Like say uh, you know make sure everybody's hair length is consistent, that the uh, detail level is consistent. Because we, when I started the book, um, it was just me doing all of the artwork and I was kind of uh, panicking to get through it because it was, you know, at 120 pages ahead of me. So I couldn't like, you know, I didn't feel like I could take my time on the detail. So the detail at the end of the book is a lot more than the beginning. So um, we're going back and I'm adding detail to the earlier pages. But uh, when that is through, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, of uh, uh, what they call lettering, you know, lettering the book, um, a little bit of that to be done, but not much more. And wow. then, uh, then it's in the hands of the, of the uh, people dealing with the printing process, I think. Wow. There. Yeah, but we did it. We made this book. Yes. I'm yeah. so excited to get my copy. Um, oh man, that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be awesome. Um it, it is an incredible book. So uh the the uh the writer, we have a writer from How to Train Your Dragon. Everything's changed since last time I was your, on your show, I think. And uh the the writer Richard um Oh, his last name is uh, Richard um, Campbell. I'm thinking. I I can't remember. Uh, but but uh, he he was a, the writer for the How to Train Your Dragon series. Okay. Um, it is top notch. The script is so good. It's funny. It's uh, you know it's got the whole uh, hero's journey in there. Um, it's it's uh, you know you go through all the emotions, and. Uh, then the artist that helped me along the way, uh, Ulysses, came aboard later on in the book, and uh, he started doing layouts for me because I was like, man, I'm, <laughs> I, it was taking me four days a page. Okay, at this rate, it's going to take me years to get through this book. So um, he and then later in the book, um, Jackie started helping. Who's who's. Um, you know, part of the, the, uh, uh, you know, community or what have you. Okay. And for a friend of, of a lot of ours. Okay. I got a question um, now about the Draco reptilians. Now I remember Corey saying once someone was asking him if some of those early renderings from um, Cosmic Disclosure of the Draco reptilians with the vestigial um, wings, if those were yeah. accurate. And he said something to the effect of, um, he does not want people like conjuring these beings by thinking on them and, and sort of like paying a lot of emotional attention to them. So he didn't really want it to look quite exactly like- <laughs> Wow, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. I know that um, from other things, I know Corey, um, I understand Corey, uh, will have a thing or two here, a turn uh, off of what, uh, you know, maybe a program is named, a character is named, so what something looks like, just so that um, if fakers try to say oh yeah i saw this thing or i was part of this thing they'll get caught in the in the lie so i understand you know i'm i i stay out of all that mess mm -hmm. um i'm just interested in i'm here for the stories and the imagery and for the ride and that's that's 
that's the fun of it for me. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what I understand. Well, I, I really, 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 really love what you're doing with this book. And um, it, it really is, uh, it's more than a graphic novel, friends. This is like a page after page after page of multiple portraits. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So, and from those early pictures from the previous show, we showed um, when Corey was a young boy, when the ships would come, it would look like a, like a, a, a pirate ship floating down like a leaf and then he could aboard it. And so that that's kind of a screen memory and, and you did a beautiful job doing that. Now I, I'm going to uh, make you host. And if you want to share some images, you can. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, um, so now you're the host. Excellent. Now he's okay, going to change I, the name of the show and everything. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> erroneously named the folder quest for truth <laughs> so excuse that um no worries man but, uh, okay let's see all right so let me uh share my screen here and i'm going to take you guys through a little uh a little trip through the the um uh, okay let's see it's so nice of you to call in from the 90s so <laughs> yeah and the the lucky thing is in this timeline i wasn't able to warn myself of the future yeah. However, I was in this timeline. I am able to call uh, into the show from a payphone. So yeah, that was how'd you do that? I don't even want to know. Yeah, but, it's, it's, but make sure you don't line. shake hands with yourself. You might explode. So don't. That's don't, right. Don't, don't touch yourself. That's right. Um, in the future, in the past. But uh, you know, on that timeline, I might be dead and not know it. Okay, so. All right, let's see what's showing up on the screen now for you. Okay, I'm seeing um, some black and white sketches and with, oh, oh now I'm seeing- uh, uh, Great, that's what, this is what is supposed to happen. The, uh, the, the chicken cult thing is on the screen and- uh, Yeah, okay, so I want to, um, I want to say that all the images here, um, you know, especially if Corey's watching, I want everybody to know that uh, all the images here are things that Corey has already shared. So they okay. should be safe to share with you guys. Awesome. Um, awesome. All of the images aren't pulled up somehow, but we'll go through what we have. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so I am not trained as a uh, comic artist. I've, I've studied the art of comics for, since I was a kid, I, uh, I, uh, I read the books on comic theory and um, and the theory of making comics, and I collected comics. Um, so I, I understand the sequential art part of it and the storytelling. Um, however, I never I trained as a painter, as an oil painter, as a portrait painter, uh, a, a draftsman of the figure, and uh, never in that there's a specific discipline in, in the type of line work that they use. You know, I never studied how to draw like Jack Kirby or uh, Jim Lee or people like that. So I did it the way I know how to do it. And I digitally painted it. So um, I handled each page like an oil illustration pretty much. Wow. Um, so it's got a bit, little bit of a different look like, I'm not going to say it's unprecedented. I've never seen anything quite like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, this, that, the, the page there, I won't tell you exactly what's going on, but um, can I guess? As, can as I guess? a painter, um, you know, my focus is always the light. It's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I tell the story mm -hmm. with the uh, light patterns. I, uh, during the day, you know, all day, I'm observing the effects of light and color mm -hmm. and that's the way I see the world. So that's kind of the way that I'm building the book. Wow. Okay. Now, now we're seeing, it looks like Corey with his NASA hat on and he's being picked up by that triangle shaped craft in his backyard. It's floating up with lights underneath it. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, I love the little details that come out when I get to pick Corey's brain, you know, when, uh -huh. when you watch 
David Wilcock or someone um, asking Corey a series of questions, mm -hmm. they're asking a certain set of questions. And then, but see, I get to pick his brain about the visual stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I'll be like, um, oh, what was the inside of the dart craft like? Like nobody ever answers that. And he's like, well, it, what you're seeing is, is uh, it's like a TV screen of what's on the outside of the craft. So it's, it's almost like it's invisible. You can tell that it's something like a really high definition image of what's on the outside of the craft. Um, so uh, Jackie and I had to put our heads together about how to represent that, how to try. Wow. Interesting. I'm not sure if people will understand there what we're trying to do or not, but um, I liked her solution on that. It looks great. I mean, it looks, it looks magical. That's, like, that's the effect that I like that word. <laughs> I like that. Is that that hatch going up kind of like a DeLorean? The, the yeah, it does. Yeah, the, the on the on the dart craft. So part goes up and part goes down. Is yeah, goes up? awesome, yeah. very cool. Um, yeah, and I'm a I'm a big fan of of film of uh, a cinematography. Mm -hmm. I've been all my life. When I was a little kid, I I checked out all the cinematography books at from the library, <laughs> uh, and uh, just always was way into that and studying that studying. Since I was a little kid, studying Tarkovsky and uh, studying, uh, you know, um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Stanley Kubrick, the, the way that they lit scenes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I always wanted to make a film and it's kind of the closest that I've gotten to come to that. So it's, it was well, exciting for me. I, I can see a few films coming out of this inspired by it now that alien is it is this exactly what that type of alien is that the tall tall white is that what that is or tall gray? no this is these are the tall grays yeah tall grays. okay so, um so there's there's uh the little grays and the, these are the tall grays the okay. the tall grays i think are um actual i'm not certain about this i think Bio robots you know, I think the, the little ones are the robots. They're like the bio robots. Yeah. They're, yeah. But I may, I think maybe these are actual uh, beings. I don't quote me on that. In this scene, uh, this is, this is little Corey. Yeah. And uh, this is an abduction scene where he is examined. Um, and, uh, and all these people are kind of, he's, he's in this room full of adults and I think other kids in their underwear. But, uh, they, these people are like, uh, you know, they're zoned out. Yeah. They're, they're like zombified, right. removing their clothes and being examined by the gray being. Wow. Yeah. Looks like he's arc welding on, on his neck there. Yes. This is some kind of a, um, a wand. They're doing something to the back of his neck there. But the very interesting thing about this. Um, a human hand there? Yes, there's a doctor okay. present as well. Um, right. Now, I showed this drawing to uh, Tatiana. I don't know if, if you knew Tatiana. Tatiana. She passed a, a, a year or two ago. No. I think a, a year and a half ago. She had her own show like this. Okay. But um, she, when she saw this illustration, she freaked out. Really? And, and she showed me drawings that her daughter had done of a tall gray wow. uh, with the same wand, uh, putting it on, I think, the back of somebody's head, head like it. it was just like this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's wild. But I try to get, you know, I go by, I try to get as much information out of Corey I, as I can mm -hmm. about the way things look. Yeah. And, you know, just That's like right. if you're trying to, if I'm trying to describe you, right, mm -hmm. um, there's only so much I can say to, to get a, it across to an, a sketch artist, right? Right. So um, he can get me so far and then I can get like 80 or 90 percent. Sure. Um, and then it just has to pass. Right. Um, 
but he's pretty happy with that. He thinks it looks pretty much like yeah. It does yeah, look you know, like a living. It does really look like a very good representation of a real living being. Very very close. Right? That's yeah. what I go for. Is I yeah. when I get close enough, it you're gonna like feel it. that being looking at you. So yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, this is a representation of. These are out of order. These, I just picked random images from Corey's uh, okay. Corey's page. Um, this is the LOC, and we've got a representation of Gonzalez, who actually looks nothing like that. Um, and uh, I know what he looks like, kind of from a description, but Corey would make him look a little different. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, these are the uh, the Anshar, and this is this is an Anshar elder, the tall uh, kind of Kenny Rogers looking guy. Um, but uh, they grow beards apparently, and uh, they get very very tall. The older they get, and their bones right. get frail. Right. And on the inside of this uh, of, of the military clothing, which he's borrowing. There's there's like a there's a suit that is holding his body together pretty much like it it, it acts like an exoskeleton or a brace sure. that um, even right. though his bones are frail yeah he's wow. he's he's able to still walk around wow cool and these are um, Kari yeah uh, this one would be Ari and this would be her sister sister. Yeah, um, all I know is uh, she looks similar to Ari, but has a rounder face. So I tried to. So now for, for people who might not know the story, uh, Ari and her sister and that older gentleman, they live inside of the earth, many hundreds of miles down in a giant cavern where they've been for 17 million years, monitoring our timeline and spying on us remotely. They can watch us. Right. Yeah, they can also influence us. Yes. So, um, so apparently, uh, sometimes when we uh, we're we're trying to interact with angelic beings, I think this is right. Uh, we're actually interacting with the Anshar, mm. and, they, and they help us. They might show us synchronicities. Mm -hmm. on clocks and stuff like that from yeah. what i understand i'm sorry if i get details wrong no it's 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 just such a fascinating story i mean um yeah you know it's such a fantastical story that i don't think anyone could make this up it has to be true it's just too bizarre it seems like that to me yeah and 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 the more i ask Corey, the more <laughs> the more answers i get and and they make sense to me Wow. Um, Corey's wearing his NASA hat here. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, it's a NASA uh, hat. But, uh, you know, he gets kind of hassled for that. It's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. This is another one I randomly picked off Corey's page. Okay. This is this is one of the first ones that Jackie helped me build. Okay. Because, um, I, you know, it's like I get to a point where I'm like, okay, we do the math and it's going to take me four more years to finish this book if I don't have help so uh Jackie who is a first class illustrator uh started helping me build backgrounds and she did a great deal of uh work on this page wow um huh, kind of going back through the images I found this one nice and uh this was this one was an actual oil paint so I did this for Michael Sala. Oh, wow. And, uh, and it was a, an image of uh, the uh -huh. Nordics and the Pope. I don't remember exactly what, <laughs> what I was representing there. Okay. But uh, the idea that I guess they had a plan of... Uh, uh, that uh, maybe the Vatican had a plan of uh, trying to create a 
ET based religion or something. But I found that back in the feed and thought I would share that. That was back in the beginning when I was making full blown oil paintings for uh, Corey. Wow. And uh, wow. <laughs> there was no digital in this. It's a hundred percent oil. Actually, I did clean this up digitally uh, uh, for something later. But uh-huh. yeah. Nice. But that's an oil painting. I have it in my apartment. Probably the, the 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 Vatican was probably trying to get the Nordics to help them in their the Vatican cricket game to 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 beat uh, the other religions and whatever kind of <laughs> sports they do. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know the Nordics were famous for that, but they look built for. Yeah, they're play. pretty good at soccer. Yeah, <laughs> right. I helped the Vatican the, soccer team. They have the man bun too for soccer. Oh yeah, a little man bun. <laughs> um. <laughs> This is, uh, uh, yeah, this is the way that we've represented the, I think this is the, partly the innervation of Richard and uh, the spheres. And he, uh, okay, so we were representing there the, uh, the AI God, uh, which is, doesn't have a form. But it's okay. like the idea of we've kind of personified this as as kind of like a Thulu slash Cthulhu uh, looking being um, or like an evil octopus that has these tentacles right. get into everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's kind of portaling here past these uh, blue spheres. I don't remember what the deal is with that panel. I don't well, always remember what I know the blue <laughs> spheres were, the blue spheres were here to buffer the um the effects of of the new space we were entering into so that we didn't all go crazy. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and apparently uh they've they've protected us from a few catastrophes um yes. Yes. Uh, pre uh pr- prematurely. Um there's another one that that was an early one that uh, that Jackie built a lot on. I think she came in um, she came in in the later pages, but uh, man, did she save my life! Like, uh, I, I there's no way we'd be done right now, and it'd be going crazy. So there's here the, we are. Oh, that's the Draco oh. reptilian. Yeah. Okay. It's two different types of Draco. So. Uh, People are confused because they'll be like, I, I didn't know. I had no idea the Draco were that big. Yeah. Um, or they think I'm exaggerating, whatever. But uh, these are the royal white Dracos. There's also the um, brownish green um, soldier class or warrior class Draco that are about eight-ish feet tall. And um, this guy is much taller. Uh, Corey said he came up uh, just about to the uh, crotch of the uh, of the royal whites. Oh my god! Yeah, horrifying. Yeah, fourteen yeah. feet. Tall, he said fourteen feet tall. Yeah, terrifying. Um, so I think this. Yeah, this, these are the. Um, this is this is Ulysses working on this. Okay, we have, we have actually a nice. Um, a nice little, uh, so this is Ulysses uh, making the layout. Okay, you can see that. Yeah. And then you can see Jackie's back, background. Okay? okay, we can see what everybody does here. Interesting. So U- Ulysses has the, out. Jackie um, puts in the background information and then I paint into wow. that. So, you know, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. And that's the way the process worked toward the end of the book. Uh, Ulysses was there a lot longer. But man, I I wish Jackie would have been there the whole time because uh, she really brings a lot to it. There those guys are. Yeah, they're this big. is not from the book, but this is they're other big art big. that I did for Corey. They're for big his, I, like, I like that. Yeah, oh. for one of his courses. Um, you know, and uh, uh, according to Corey's testimony, these uh, 
he actually saw the bodies of these beings. Mm -hmm. uh, they had they had these light green eyes, and you know, I presumed they had uh, pretty dark skin, but I think they had they had a pretty uh, mild complexion. Okay, and uh, you know, were neither white people nor uh, you know they're kind of their own right thing two different races of uh i made up this the the face paint on sure i kind of took cultural liberties there imagining what he might have worn on his face interesting yeah but the but then the 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 female figure there is based very closely on uh nefertiti nefertiti yeah very closely and all i mean basically all i did was take these statues of nefertiti and uh paint into them you know in uh, wow, that's awesome. life. yeah it does look alive i mean you've really uh made something fantastic look totally alive i was very pleased with that one yeah okay well, another rando image here uh i really like this page this is uh, a representation. You know, we had to be very careful about not stepping on the toes of any um, television networks, right? Um, stuff like that, and you know, not cutting any corners with uh, with um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, um, um, property um, copyrights. Yeah. Uh, 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 copyrights. Yeah. Why am I think? Why am I, that word's escaping me. Um, um, property. Ah, I can't remember. LT's property. I mean, different, different, yeah. different mode of thinking. Uh, but yeah, any, uh, any of that kind of stuff. And so we have, we have it, this first interview taking place, not at a studio, but in the home of uh, David Wilcock. And that's his actual home there. Right, yeah. Man, and it's fun. It's fun getting that accuracy as much as possible in these. Yeah. So I like to know, you know, what what David's house actually looked like at the time. What David looked like at the time. Uh, right. All of this. How you captured him perfectly it looks like a photograph. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, it's I'm using a lot of photographs. I'm, I've got massive. Uh, files of images that i've that i've compiled I bet. of of their faces wow you just did a fantastic job my goodness well, this this was one of those um pages that were just an absolute beast i've altered the um image of the royal white uh the grand pendar since this one i'm not totally pleased with it to me it looks goofy there but uh Man, all these Draco, all these uh, reptilians. Uh, there's a there's a nice stretch of the book where there's just tons of reptilians and a extremely painful part to make of the. And they were like coming to my dreams every night too. After a while. <laughs> wow, I bet, I bet, yeah. staring at this all day, working on it. Yeah, it's yeah. got to come through in the dreams. Yeah, I felt like I, I there was a there was a period there where I rarely had a dream without uh, Draco. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Hazard uh, of the work. What's that? Hazard of the work. Yeah, right, work hazards. Now there's a great picture. Corey looks very, very uh, angry or upset. Yes, okay. And I get a lot of flack. I got a lot of flack for this one. This is actually my favorite page in the book. And uh, I shared it on Instagram, shared yeah. it on Facebook. And a lot of people are like, why is Corey so mad? Um, or they think that I'm trying to make it cool by, you know, uh, making, they think I'm trying to make it too macho. I got somebody, a comment like, it. Corey is like, this is, this scene comes, I mean, this is like, this is like the, you're in the belly of the beast, like okay, you are in yeah. the the. Yeah, uh, like better, you're not going to survive. Yeah. yeah. This is this is the most intense part of the book. Okay. And uh, yeah, like the the uh, negative things, upsetting things happen in the book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. spoiler alert. 
yeah. but it's not all fun and smiles. Um, so yeah, Corey's upset uh, at some points in the book, and he makes uh, unpleasant faces. Sorry, <laughs> that, that's fine. I, and now the the people who are smiling, those are the Zulu, right? Yeah, the Zulu. That's right. Now, these yeah. characters are really interesting people. I, I, I really are. am super interested in these people. Apparently, right. they were the first humans, humanoids, to have interstellar trade with other beings, and they did it all mentally through their consciousness. They oh, don't have any technology. Uh, Corey also says they they uh, you know they they're kind of revered almost as like superheroes. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, he was also talking about how they I don't know if it's their the suits, but he was talking about how they can they can fly like Superman. Wow. He has yeah. and this is the cool thing about this is one of the <laughs> most compelling things about Corey. Is he'll say, I haven't seen him do this, you know, or I haven't seen this, but I know that they can do this, or I know that this, this happened, or, he, you know, he'll be honest with me and we'll put a scene in the book, right? Okay. Like there's a scene somewhere in the book where uh, something is being remote viewed. Okay. Um, and the right, the author once maybe a little bit more um he likes the zulu for it's nice to have a little bit more color diversity in the story but also they're just really cool beings too yeah. and uh and so we might insert the uh zulu into like say a remote viewing or something like that that's happening right yeah. um but cory could just say oh yeah those were the Zulu. The Zulu were there. We saw the Zulu. But um, he's presenting it to us like, well, this didn't really happen exactly like this. But we want to show the Zulu more. So we'll, so we'll make this the Zulu. That, that to me, gives it this ring of authenticity that, um, mm -hmm. that yeah, he met the Zulu. But... Um, you know, they didn't appear exactly here in the story. Um, little things like that, that that make me really think, man, this guy is telling the truth. Yeah. So, so now, um, have you been following his recent um, disclosures, his little videos that, he, that he's done? Yeah, somewhat. Um, I, I, uh, I lose track just because my head is in this book. Right, right. Make a living, um, but um, yeah, said, somewhat. Said something about the Zulu recently that um, that in Antarctica, the um, the cabal or whoever is in control of the information wanted to wake up the um, the, the the giants in stasis or the people in stasis mm. in Antarctica in these ships. And so they performed a sacrifice to kill this young lady, oh. and and um, they opened up the, and and these people were very confused because this wasn't supposed to happen this way. And a Zulu appeared and went over at one point, came on over and touched the girl, brought her back to life, and said, "You didn't need to do this, or barbarics, you know." Mm -hmm. So they are like superheroes. Yeah, so that's that's what I want to say. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, extremely uh, positive beings. Okay, this is uh, this is another one that people think I'm exaggerating on, but I'm totally not. Okay, I'm really trying to get get it just yeah. the way Corey is describing it. Wow. Um, so this is the, the the scene with the royal white Draco, the Grand Pindar, and uh, these gigantic like gigantic this is not a regular uh warrior class draco this right. is the these are the royal whites they are um they are much bigger mm -hmm. and uh scarier and so uh and they and they have they have these kind of uh crocodile like features or alligator like features so i tried to get that effect across and they stink 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they like to stink. Like reptilian musk. Yeah. Um, Corey was saying they actually roll in nasty stuff or like put it on themselves uh, to, I don't know if it just has a lower vibration that they like or what, but they, they like to stink. Wow. Um, yeah, and then they, we have these, uh, these, they have these spears, the, the warrior class Draco have these spears uh, that have this energy in them. Oh my. Um, like lightning uh, that, that is stored up, I guess, in the base of this. Uh, they have a base that's kind of like, um, you know, if you imagined uh, they're, they're like, a, like a Batman symbol um, at the base, like made of, made of some kind of stone or metal. Okay. And this, the energy is kind of stored up in there and okay. shoots out through the through the tip of the spear. Wow. Yeah. Um, Interesting. So, you know, all of these, I'm trying to get as close to Corey's descriptions as possible. You know, we're not finessing stuff to... Right. Uh, sometimes we do finesse things to jazz it up and make it like kind of... A little bit more um, visually exciting, yeah. But most, you know, when you have like a high energy, high emotion scene, but uh, I mean, most of these scenes we're trying to get like accuracy. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a like I guess a promo image of yeah. little Corey there, teenage Corey. Oh, that's teenage Corey. Oh, funny. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, and, and there's a, a a mantid being. Yeah, we have a mantis and Mika, mantid, and we have Mika. He's cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah, a gray, and we have the Nordic. Um, so this is Corey when he uh, wow. when he was an earlier teenager. I guess when he was 14, 15, 16. Oh, too soon. And uh, they would train in the empty malls. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try to open up. Do you mind if I if I Go through a few more images here. Go for it. Go for it. <clears throat> and I actually a shout out to the to the chat a little bit. I, I'm not able to see the chat while we're doing this, but um, just want to say hey to everybody and welcome to the show. And I hope you're enjoying this this awesome artwork. Okay, so, let's see here. So if they if they want to jump on board and order one of these books, it's uh, wh where would they where would they go? They would go to DisclosureComics.com. DisclosureComics.com. Okay, I think there's just, just um, three more. I don't know if this, if this the screen here, okay, it is working. And these just show side-by-sides of uh, Sketches. my work and uh, his work. So you can see Ulysses building the, uh, Mm -hmm. building the um what do you call it the layout sure <clears throat> in the earlier pages i was doing a hundred percent of it uh, for a long time i don't remember if it was half the book more than half the book i don't remember but it was a lot yeah okay and then there was a. Uh, this is one where you have jackie's work back there so you have uh ulysses layout Jackie making the background. It looks like I put so many Draco in this one that you don't hardly see the background. But wow. there's that. Um, That's wild. So I sorry. also have I have paintings, but I think maybe we'll. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk a bit before I show uh, my painted art or how you want to paste that out. I'll stop well, sharing for for a bit okay. here. All right, let's, okay. Hello, Yavanda, the Mud Rabbit, Terry. Well, I hope you're all loving this. This is, this is such a treat. Wow. And, and uh, this is our, what, our third interview we've done? That sounds right to me, yeah. Third or fourth or something like that? It's not the fourth. It's either the second or third, I think. I think it's the third. I think you're right. Yeah. So, so now you got to go back and, and clean things up and go, <clears throat> okay, we changed the color of the Draco. Now we got to make them all that same color or, and that type of thing. Once that yeah. all gets done, 
And that's going to be a lot, probably 120 pages to go through. It's it's uh, I, I I know that uh, Jackie and I are both picking it apart, but I'm finding that I'm I'm moving through these revisions pretty fast mm -hmm. and I'm not intimidated by the process. Uh, right. So, yeah, I, I think we'll do just fine. It's so now, more fun to clean it up than it is to make it. It's daunting to to make right. it for the first it's time. done. Now you're just polishing it a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that must be a, a, a huge feeling of achievement you know yeah um, i know i felt achievement after my first 32 page book i drew but but i can't imagine 120 pages my goodness yeah not only 120 pages but on each of those pages there's five to six right illustrations. right oh <laughs> right ooh, man. right i've never worked so hard in my life C curses those comic people making it that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know the normal process of making a comic book is you have a penciler, penciler, you have, an inker. Inker, you have a colorist. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, oh, for a great chunk of the book, I was just making the whole thing as a painting. Yeah. So uh, wow. that was a lot of work. We've gotten to a process a little bit more um, traditional, but I'm still like finessing all the forms and fingers and toes of wow. all these uh, and you know scales and everything on, on, on yeah this. I I can't even imagine that's just uh hats off to you man wow thank you and you you just don't find an artist like this every day folks he's he's a he's also a portrait artist now now that you're done doing the book or soon to be done your mm -hmm. next the next step you're gonna go through is you're going to offer your services to the world isn't that right that's right yes um, so yeah I, I'm going to try to return to before this book I, I I made a living as a portrait artist I did very little illustration I did portrait art portrait art in teaching and selling art in galleries and I'm going to try to try to uh, get back into that seen but i've got a new audience now you know i virtually changed over my entire audience to uh truthers yeah truther community um and it's kind of funny you know i've almost lost touch with my whole art audience but uh yeah but that's what i do that's that's my, uh that's what my uh my my zone is my um my training and uh, so, yes, I will, I, I will be uh, returning to both doing commissioned artwork and teaching. I do, I teach online. I, 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 I do that uh, and also teach locally private classes. I, I probably, I may or may not go back to university teaching, but uh, I really prefer to do the private lessons. Yeah. I bet. I mean, uh, I, one of the benefits of having Steve Safalo as one of your Facebook friends is he posts lots of pictures of his beautiful sketches and drawings and paintings of, of you know, scantily clad women, scantily clad men. No, no but um, artistic forms, the human form, beautiful. It's you beautiful. Know, yeah, and, you know, that's what I many years I, I taught figure drawing so that was my profession for oh from 2003 till to 2014 wow. um, so so I I uh I made my living teaching um draw, drawing the drawing and painting the human figure so you know that's why there's so many nude people is uh is that's what I did and then I would take a lot of the I would demo in class for the I would teach by demonstrating mm -hmm. and then I would take the pieces home and then I would make like, you know, make um, something out of it. Like I would turn it into a narrative or something like that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. But the, you know, yeah. as it happens is what I do well. So, uh, you know, it works out really well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible to, to see. I mean, um, 
And now, do you have a website with all with some of your art on it, so some of the curious people can go and check that out? Yeah, it's a little updated. I mean, a little outdated. I I have a uh, stevensafalo.com. Okay, so follow him. Yes, <laughs> and also so follow me on Instagram, um, and and that one is uh, Steve Safalo on Instagram. Steve Safalo on Instagram. Follow him. <clears throat> so follow him. Yes, and. And that's, I think, I think Instagram is really my, my hub. That's where I really like to direct people. Okay. Now, uh, now you are a top notch artist. You've painted many, many, many photos. Some of the stuff you've worked on is in the Guggenheim. Now you're going to be doing this on your own. And um, as I understand it, you're offering our listeners a 10% discount on their uh, purchase. If they happen to have a, a loved one that they want to get a surprise picture of, you know, that's or, right. Uh, human or non-human loved ones. So I also do pets. You know, yeah. everybody, everybody has things. All of you have a loved one past or present that you would love to have a, a beautiful oil portrait to pass down hmm. through the generations to the grandkids, the great grandkids. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do posthumous portraits. So like I might paint an ancestor or a grandparent or something like that. I think I'm gonna do a portrait of, uh, of uh, uh, Clifford Mahoudi, in fact. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, uh, I did one of Bill Tom. Bill Tompkins, yes. You know, pe people that are loved in the community, uh, but but uh, I also do. Uh, you know, it, your your kids. Um, everybody's got uh, kids or parents or or a pet. Uh, just think about that. Uh, it's a gift that doesn't doesn't. It's not the first thing that comes to your mind, but it's an extraordinary gift to uh, give somebody with a treasure that can belong with the family for generations. Yeah, it's not gonna fade away. I mean, oil paints right. are pretty much permanent. I mean, you can go to right. galleries and see paintings hundreds of years old. So these, these things are gonna be around. And, and Yeah, they're uh, literally painted with stone. So oil paint, oil paint pigments are stones. So you're painting with, uh, you know, with powder. And that stone powder, you know, if you paint with, um, you know, you paint with lapis, it's going to always be lapis, you know, so that that color is not going to go anywhere. The oils might, um, oils can yellow a little bit, the, the medium can yellow a little bit, but, uh, but oil paint is archival and it lasts for centuries. And that paint is going to be there hundreds of years after <laughs> You and everybody you imagined is gone. It's like you know, something you print off of your uh, home inkjet printer. You know, it can fade in one day in the daylight. These things are going to be around forever. So it's a it's a great heirloom gift. Do you have that uh, flyer that you had? Oh yeah, that should be in my other mix here. Um, I'll I'll show folks uh, my uh, okay if I can remember how to do this again. You're doing great. I'll show people a mix of oil paintings here. Yep. Uh, I have I have paintings and drawings that I sort of randomly randomly pick to show. Uh, that's a six foot painting in my home. Six foot tall. Yeah. Like four feet wide then. No. Yeah. Three um, feet, three and a half feet. Wow. That's yep, I changed you my award. You just won an award or uh, got it in the calendar with this. Is this right? Yeah, I was in a calendar in in a in uh, in uh, like the Netherlands or something like that. This is what this is a more recent painting wow. I did in a Target bag. <laughs> well, he was standing very still for that pose for a long time. I can tell. Yeah, right. yeah you mentioned the nude figure. Like that's beyond nude. He doesn't even have skin on. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is this is. Uh, Oh, nice. That's a commission portrait I just finished for someone. 
Oh, wow. Wow. Someone, someone I went to grade school with. Is that, uh, are they sisters or mother and daughter? Sisters. Okay. Yeah. The, the older sister looks remarkably like, like her mom did when I went to school with her. Wow. Um, I like that uh, partially painted edges. Showing. Yeah, she asked for me to keep it kind of wild and sketchy. So. Oh, cool. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I had fun doing that. Look at those faces. I mean, there's there's blues in a face. There's all kinds of colors you wouldn't think in a face. Look at that. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's that, so interesting. That's how you give it the, the, the illusion of light, really, is uh, that if you think about it, light is a full spectrum of colors. So white light is all of the colors. It's the full spectrum. So uh, when you put all of those colors in in the face and you know how to do it right mm -hmm. uh, it's going to total up to a sensation of light yeah, yeah wow. there, there's no light without uh, rainbows even even when you have uh even when you have say a limited palette like the old masters had gray uh red you know they had black and black white red ochre um, and sienna and but they would use those colors in a manner that they would create a full spectrum hmm. using black and white as blue so yes that 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 full color spectrum creates the the uh, sensation of light i'll teach you all about it if uh if anybody wants to learn contact me this is a guy um, I learn from man you want to know art this guy this guy can teach you Wow, yeah, look at that. a long time, and I, I learned from some of the best out there. Is this on a piece of metal? This or? is. This is on a on a toaster pan. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, on on the back of a toaster pan. Nice. A scene from a scene I saw in Italy a while back, and I've been kind of like, man, I used to put so much just blood, sweat, and tears into making these. Like, you know, I had to be a modern. Um, like Baroque painter or something. And uh, I used to just, I used to just uh, struggle so hard to be classically good, you know? Well, you are. And, okay. and, uh, Look at that. Wow. But after, after this book, I'm just having a good old time and I'm just kind of like, uh, yeah, you know, going fun. through fun stuff. Yeah. I'm just doing fun, like kind it. of uh, quick, painting of uh whatever seems like fun to me and things i see you know like uh on road trips and stuff. so you saw this someone actually made that that's yeah cool. that's I, uh, I saw this on a road trip uh driving through in fact i see it like all the time i i, I like to revisit the same <laughs> little spots on awesome. road trips i always stop at the snoopy oh that's great yeah Okay, this is the flyer you spoke of. Yeah, look at this, friends. Look at this stuff. There's a dog. Take a look at that dog. Yeah, he's I, he's in the mix here too. We'll we'll take a we'll look at the. I've the never dog. seen a dog portrait that good. I mean, this guy. I mean, wow. We'll see a bigger image of it. This is uh, here in Charleston. Yeah, so when I do these paintings, they're all my own experiences. They're, they're, um, I, I see these kind of little quick paintings as almost uh, a visual diary. Mm -hmm. They just look awful. These, these reproductions are just, the, the uh, originals are so much better. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's hard to get. Now, look at this. Wow. Yeah, this is, this the is one of hands. One of the commissions I'm most proud of. Look at that. This was for a uh, board member of the of a museum in Arkansas. Wow. And uh, I guess, you know, she was when you're made like a senior member or something like that, they they'd get your portrait officially done. Wow. And, and I had a blast doing this jewelry. I love the lighting. I love the lighting. Yeah. Dark. Well, they saw what I do and they were, you know, make her look Baroque. So uh -huh. 
Uh, I got really into that hand. Yeah, that's that's love. Both hands are just lovely. And wow. this wood, you know, it's, it's so fun to get the surfaces, all the surfaces. Yeah, oil paint just has this quality that it can just mimic anything. I know it. Unlike anything else, it can just sort of uh, shine on the wood there, transform the, into other. That little shine things. on the wood there, right? Yeah, there, right. Now that's that's really awesome. It's a blast. It is so much fun. And, and, and I just love when somebody lets me, somebody lets me go crazy and doesn't say, make me look 20 years younger. <laughs> because, because I mean, look at that. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Just the way she is. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so much uh, depth in, in uh, human uh, character in that. Um, and then this was a uh, wow. This was a commission I took in Raleigh. The family became very close friends of mine. Wow! Look at that. And, uh, and look at the little girl that plays the harp. Oh, she plays the harp. Yeah. Oh my! So this was, uh, I think, for a birthday celebration. They had a big unveiling. It was wonderful. Wow! Look at that. Now. This Cloth is that like probably the one of the hardest things to paint, isn't it? Nah, it's fun. It's fun. Look at that. <laughs> hardest thing to paint is trees. Really? Like, yeah. Just dab them a little bit, like uh, what's his name? You just dab it, right? What are you saying? What are you saying? Oh, like uh, Bob, Bob Ross. Ross, or or the other guy, um, Alexander. What's his Bill name? Bill Alexander. Yeah. Yeah, he was the original guy. Yeah, I, I remember him as a kid. A little in crimson. He was he was great. I loved watching him. They would say, "Mighty white." Yeah, <laughs> he was pretty, uh, he was great. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, this was a uh, this is a painting I did on a street. Wow, um, love it. You know, I have to work my <laughs> I have to work my skills back up to this level again. I've, I'm working on this graphic novel in a totally different mode, uh -huh. and. Uh, Man, but I was, I was, when I was doing, when I was painting every day, I can nail anything. It's like, I felt you could just sit there, fall asleep on my couch, or you could just be eating dinner and I would sit down and crank out a portrait of you, you know? Wow. And then when you're, when you're doing it every day like that, you yeah. really get in a zone where you can nail it. And so I did this outside. I did it for a uh, arts festival. Nice. I just uh, somebody recommended this girl. We became good friends through this sitting, and uh, I just just banged it out in like two hours. Wow, that's that's a very nice piece. Thanks. Really lovely. One of the best uh, alla primas that I did. Like it was very limited palette, no blue. I used uh, and like an old master's palette. Just no uh, blue. Uh, huh? Wow. Yeah, I, did, I just mixed gray. The gray. Used gray as blue. Ah. Exactly. That's the way, if you look at, you know, uh, Velazquez, Rembrandt, that's what they're doing. Okay. Um, this so, is, so when an artist goes into the blue mood, they, uh, they're in a blue mood, it's they only have blue paint left, right? It's, they can't afford to buy any more blue, any more than just blue. Well, blue, blue is the, I guess, was the most expensive thing back oh, then. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so you, uh, well, okay, I guess. Red. started making when picasso went through the blue period they they figured out how to make affordable uh blue pigments okay. so right. by then it was common to have it but but in the old days like um you know the 1600s the 1700s they didn't have pigments like that like or or the 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 pigments the blue pigments were very um expensive so only the finest paintings like and the finest subjects would be represented with with a pure blue and it'd be put laid down as a glaze over top of the the gray blues you know so like the madonnas they would they would have uh they would have nice pure lapis uh, glazed on top wow this is a portrait of one of my daughters awesome look yeah. at that 
This is one, this one is at the uh, SCAD Museum in Savannah, Georgia, six feet wide. Wow, look at that. That one is entitled uh, Goliath Unseen. I, I called it that in 2007. And now right. we have the invisible enemy. <laughs> well, I think you perfected the trees there, dude. Look at that. Yeah, and I did those on site. So this, this I, I painted uh, in the studio, the whole background, I painted outside, not in the studio. Okay. Yeah. Six feet. I painted the whole background. Outside. Wow. Horses back here. That was my backyard. Wow. Um, look at that. This is one that I did with uh, that. This is one that I look back on and I go, man, that was tops. That was one of the best things I did. This is a. Uh, kind of a um poetic play on uh obviously the uh abraham and isaac but that's that's my son as the model for isaac wow. so i thought i'd show people this too i also do sketch portraits oh, and that. sketches and that's 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 a portrait I did of my dad when he was young wow that's pretty cool one of one of my sons. Yeah. Wow. There's another, there's a more refined pencil portrait. Look at that. The type of thing that I might do, like if somebody sent me a, a photo or something. You know, she looks something familiar. More. Is she like an actress or something? She looks familiar. No, that was my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Dated for four years. Um. That was, uh, yeah, that was one I did in a, a couple of years back. One of the last paintings I did before the graphic novel. At the Mardi Gras or something? Yeah, the, uh, what do you call it? The Day of the Dead. Oh, wow. This was a demo I did maybe 10 years ago for a classroom. Wow. On a live model. Um, cat portrait. This this is a this is a silly one I did. Uh, Look at the cat. Yeah. Oh, is that you? No, this was my next door neighbor in Raleigh, and uh, did you see the logo? This logo at the bottom of the cat. That's like my signature now. Oh wow! Um, cool. I had he was a graphic designer, and he designed my signature. Okay. Uh, in trade for this portrait, so oh, nice. he wanted he wanted to be painted with all these kind of, uh, you know, no, I didn't want to do it because I was like, I know these are all Illuminati symbols, yeah. <laughs> but but he was like, yeah, I want to be like this, so I painted him. <laughs> I painted him. Uh, I I think he came out on the better end of the stick. He did a little logo for you, and you did. A I know for him. I know, but I really wanted that logo. So. With the scrub brushes on his shoulders and everything. Yeah, I I just do that sort of thing. I I try not to, but I do that kind of stuff all the time. He's this, a nice uh, guy. He's a nice is, guy. Yeah, he was a cool guy. This was uh, this logo was his logo, uh, the oh. one on his uh, jacket there. This one. Oh, I skipped one. That was one. Uh, this was a. Uh, I ran into this girl at a restaurant. This was uh, oh, maybe 12 years back. And uh, I thought, I have to paint this girl. And wow. so I was, I was there with my wife at the time, you know, my ex-wife at this uh, restaurant. And I said, I have to paint this girl. And so I went up and said, can I do your portrait? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I did. Right there? or. or no, I brought her into my classroom actually and did okay. a demo for my class. Awesome. Her name is Alice. Wow. This is one I did of my son and I did the whole painting from life and he was 10 years old. So, you know, what I would do is I would get the, the drawing established, draw out all the line work, you know, all the proportions mm -hmm. in one layer. And then I would do all the light. Uh, so, you know, imagine a wiggly kid with uh, ADD uh, 
I kind of okay. let him flop all around as long as he he tried to go back in that pose. There's a dog I did for someone. Uh, Look at that. Wow. Obviously from a photograph. I love it. That's incredible. This is one of my ex-wife and one of our babies. Aww. This is a commissioned drawing. I like that one. Wow. This is one. Uh, this one was my daughter's idea. So she said, uh, hey, can I wear this like a cape? And can you paint me Double wrap. with that? And so, uh, yeah, I, I said, oh, yeah. And then I kind of had this idea of the box it came from being some kind of a portal. It was about 2008, 2009. That's probably where cats one. come from. What's that? That's probably where cats come from. Oh, yeah, that's I, it's my board. fault. It's my and my daughter's fault. <laughs> Oh, bit of my son. Look at that hairdo. Yeah, another son of mine. Years back, this is the same one that's uh, same kid as that. Oh wow! And now he has very, very long hair, way past his shoulders. Really? It's like a little Metallica. A guy. Now, now, was he the only kid in school with hair like that, or was there other kids with hair like that? I think he. Uh, I think there was one other, but you know, I, I was. Uh, I I had my hair like that back in the day, so. Oh, you did. I prided myself in knowing how to do it properly. Now, yeah, there may be another kid, I, but we know how to put it up correctly. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you now. I where I went to school. I went to school in at Mound West Tonka High School in Mound, Minnesota. And we were the Mound Mohawks. Oh yeah? And so me and a bunch of my friends, we were gonna shave our heads into a Mohawk on the last day of school. And I was at home and I've got the thing ready and going, yeah, I'm gonna chicken out. And I thought, no. oh, I'll, probably, I'll probably be the only one without it. I get there, no one did it. Yeah. No one did it. What year was this? 1980. Oh, man, that would have been just the right year to do it. It would have been like the start of that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, you could have taken credit for starting the whole trend in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, wow, that was fantastic. Let's see what the chat has to say. Um, yeah, wow. Just incredible. Wow, amazing, amazing stuff, Steve. Thank you. So it must be nice to be able to talk to Corey and hey, you know, what 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 color uh shoes do the Draco wear? Or, you know, different yeah. questions like that. Of course it's they don't blast. wear shoes. Yeah, it's a blast because I, I get to ask him the things that I am curious about, you know, the things that dazzle my imagination. And uh, man, he's always got an answer. Uh, you know, you ask him, what did this thing look like? And he'll tell you, what was the environment like? Um, you know, this is not, this is not in my mind, something that somebody just made up because completely three-dimensional and, and four-dimensional. You know, you ask him uh, any question and, uh, like you take okay for example the the um the tierra of the um mayans okay that 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 healed him okay um they put it on his head and it had uh, these healing energies wow and uh so i'm designing the tierra i don't i don't right offhand have an image of this but um these tierras when I made it, okay, and he's like, no, is it like this? No, it's like this. And so I go back and forth with them. And when I'm done with it, man, is it beautiful. Man, is it exquisite looking. And um, I think, okay, like unless Corey has a background in design, yeah. so he's, like, he's like designing crowns, like tiaras, clothing, hairstyles of the Mayans. Um, spaceships, 
all these things that's not coming from Corey, you know in my mind that's coming from a robust established universe you know of of, of imagery wow it's just so mind-boggling and and you must feel so honored to be the guy who brings this story to life in in comic book or graphic novel forming that is spectacular and of course from there movie houses and you know studios looking for to do series they're going to look at this graphic novel and they're going to go hey okay, look what we got here let's do this that's right yeah and whatever people make of it whether people believe the story or not um what i like to say is this like first of all it's extraordinary the 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 the, the story is one of the best stories you'll ever hear in, in terms of the uh, the narrative the visuals um anything that you want the the um the roundness of the of the story um and uh the beauty of it okay so you have that aspect and this is the part i want to like i want to sort of have a come together like uh moment here there's 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 division in the community which is fine with me like i'm not one of these guys i think i think if people have their own opinions that's a good thing right mm -hmm. um so uh whether you think uh cory's the real guy what do you think these other guys super soldier narrative yeah, these different narratives like i personally this is my 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 point of view is this i think we're going to all look back on this time, okay? What a crazy time we live in. Any way you look at it, it's interesting. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you remember you had that guy um, who was like, oh, I'm Baby Q. What was that guy's name? Um, uh, Aston Steinbrad. Yeah, Austin Steinbrad. No, Aston Steinbrad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I named him. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so you have the Steinbarters and then the anti steinbarters and yeah and okay like the way i look at it is i go man i'm in the middle of this thing and like it's so nutty you know and one day one day people we're gonna all look back on this and we're gonna laugh at some of it we're going to um be astonished at some of it and go oh and some of us are going to go, oh, I thought that guy was the shill. You were right, you know. And uh, we're going to, I think there's going to be a 20 part documentary series on the 2020s, you know. Yeah. And we're all going to have, get, get our popcorn and we're all going to look back and we're going to want to see the shills, you know. We're going <laughs> we're gonna to want to see the people that were, we're, we're, we're going to see all of it. And so I think all these sides, deserve to be documented you know mm -hmm. so like uh, a lot of people are down on you know saying oh this guy's making a documentary or a book about this thing mm -hmm. but i think no do it do all of it you know yeah yeah even, if, even this guy even if this guy is a to i'm not talking about Corey. you know i'm, right. I'm just being really general right um because i i find Corey authentic that's me yeah me but uh but even if so and so is a shill we're going to have a blast and we're going to like want to see all of it. We're not going to want to lose documentation of any of this stuff. And it's they might, all they might wake someone up. crazy. Was they, that? Might wake, they might wake somebody up. Some sure. of these fake people might wake people up and, you know, you can't eventually it. it's all going to, it's all going to shake out. Now, Corey, I know he's working on a kind of a tell all about the, the community. It's, it's going to be, possibly uh you know causing some waves have mm -hmm. you heard much about that no okay i, I <laughs> i've been my head's been so in completing i bet book and then trying I to bet. figure out how to how to make ends meet next month after the book's uh over yeah that uh i've not been following anything really right yeah just staying near the waffle house and and uh, I, I have been following. Rear oh, yeah, Mountain, the so. Elvis on the chain. Now, let's talk about that. You do these little videos. You're driving. You got this guy on your rear view mirror. You got classic rock playing, sometimes Elvis. 
and you're filming Elvis doing what, what are mostly look like James Brown moves, but. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's remarkable that uh, if, you, if you have a, a, a human form hanging from a mirror yeah. on a stretchy string, it looks so much like they're doing all these uh, really cool dance moves. Yeah, it's so, pretty cool. uh, and it and it bops along really good to uh, classic golden oldies tunes. Yeah, it does. That's that's fun. I like that. And it makes me think of you all the time, of course. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. That was our best show so far, I think. Yeah, yeah, because, well, probably because we gave you the host button there and you helped make oh, it yeah. visual because I had some visual glitches in some of our past shows. So gotcha. thank you so much for doing that. That really made a big difference. And, and um, so you heard it, friends. If you have a loved one, either alive or recently passed or long passed or a pet, that you love or loved, this is the guy, he does incredible work. Or maybe you know someone who can use his services. Check him out at stevesafalo.com. Stephen Safalo with a PH. Stephen with a PH, yes. Safalo.com. But you can find me at Instagram, you can find me on Facebook. Um, I'm out there My, in more senses than one. But, uh, yeah. but if you, but you'll find me on the, um, there's, I think three, three people with my name in the world, three or four. <laughs> and one other thing I wanted to bring up is you've got this group of um, dreams and uh, astral musings. Right. Where people can, on Facebook, it's a Facebook page, and you can uh, write you what, what fanciful, fanciful dreams you've had. And you get quite a few people making some very interesting uh, little stories that they've dreamt. Yeah, it is such a fun group. And I try to leave it open to, uh, to I mean, anything bizarre that's happening in people's lives, something where they can open up and share and we can, we can talk about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's called, it's called um, Facebook group. It's called Starseed Dreams. Um, visions and astral musings something like that yeah musings yeah short that's, that's where most of the, what's that it's a short easy to remember title i know i, I like to be uh you know i like a lot right. of uh filigree but now you have a lot of interesting dreams yeah you post well, on there i think you post well, the most yeah yeah, it was mainly because I, I like to um, journal my dreams, but uh, I find that I like to do it in, um, I like to type them out on my phone, but I don't want to like flood people's Facebook feeds with uh, my dreams every night. So I'm kind of using the Facebook group as my personal dream journal, inviting wow. other folks to do that also. That's incredible. Yeah, and some people do. We get a lot of, a lot of people in there sharing. That's awesome. I, I, you know, I haven't been dreaming lately. Otherwise, I would be adding to that as well. And maybe I will. Maybe something will change. Well, they say learn a new skill. So uh, do something, shake it up in your life. Like do a new form of exercise. Uh, learn a new language. Uh, there, there, there. Uh, I think that's why I dream so much. So I'm always taking on something new, learning a new language, doing a new like exercise routine. And I think it kind of, you know, I, you want to break, um, break uh, patterns. Right. And, I think, you know, and that, that, uh, that wakes up your dream life, I think. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I've had very detailed dreams, but boy, your dreams are very, very cool. Yeah. Um, a, a few people have have dreams like that in the group. It's River, River Speak does. I know she does. Yeah, and then uh, Mary slash uh, 
I actually can't remember her real name. You you had her on the show. Oh, um, Bledsoe. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've known her from that name for uh, over a year now, so I can't remember. Everybody's got different names. It's, it's yeah. really difficult to, you know, to keep track. Everyone's got two, three, four names. Yeah, then Rivers Dee Dee, uh, her, her real name. Maybe, maybe I'm not supposed to say that. And then uh, Stephen, uh, oh, the other Stephen, he's got really great dreams too. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, so come join us. That's Share your cool. dreams with us. So, so what's it like back in the 90s? Just give us a little taste of, look around and, and describe what's happening. Yeah, well, people are... People are getting together. You can see all those people back there at Waffle House. People oh, yeah. are getting together and meeting in person. Yeah. They're moving very slowly. I can <laughs> hardly even see them moving. That's that's a time dilation effect. I see. Okay. Yeah. But uh, but as you can see, people are getting together in person and having a good time. And that's a thing I missed most about the '90s. Is uh, is if I didn't know where my friends were. I check out Denny's. I check out JoJo's, and they're going to be in one place or the other. There you go. So yeah, my son, he's a. Why? Where are? Where do I find all the teenagers? You know, when he was a teenager, he was living in my apartment. I was like, we'll find them. Because you know, we used to we used to have uh, what do they call it when all the teenagers would get out and party in all the parking lots. Uh, they call it um, cruising, right? Oh yeah. Uh, and so I was like, oh, yeah, we got to figure out where all the people are cruising. They don't cruise anymore. No. They're all on Instagram. They're all home on Instagram. That's where the teenagers are. Well, at least they know where their kids are, but they don't know what they're thinking about or who they're talking to. And it's depressing. Get out and have some fun. Yeah. And uh, get out and go to Waffle House. Yeah. It's awfully nice down there. You'll love it. <laughs> You'll love it. Well, Steve, I, I think we've uh, we've covered the gamut here, and I, I got to thank you again for coming on board to the Truth Quest to talk about your amazing talent and everything that you're doing. We're anxiously awaiting that graphic novel, so we're all rooting for that to be to be done. But you know, don't rush it because we, you know, because it's going to be really, really nice. It already it's is nice. be special. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be a, in my opinion, a historical piece. So, and uh, this guy's a true, he's like a master. So if you have a, a kid or a grandkid that wants to take lessons, this guy's the guy. All right. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. I really appreciate you coming on board here. It is such a pleasure. Always fun. And we'll talk to you later. Thank you very okay. much. Bye. Thank you. Oh, you need to make me the host again. Oh, okay. To, so you can hang up, huh? All right. How do I do that? Uh, let me see. Participants. We didn't plan that part. <laughs> oh, reclaim host. I can just do this. Reclaim okay. host. There. It this was guy is terrifying me up here to your right. Um, there, there's a guy that's like oh, in the in that's, the. That's William Shatner. Oh, is it? Ever, ever since he went up into space, he he jumps aboard my spaceship and he he hitches a ride into space because he loves space so much now. Oh, of course. Well, uh, yeah. Every time I look up there, it's surprising. Yeah, yeah there he is, and he's he's looking pretty young, almost like he was back in his old days. Uh, start almost like I took a picture of him, cut him, cut it out, and. And taped it up there, you know. I'm traveling so He was in the news recently, wasn't he? He did. Yeah, he went into space. Like, he went into that's space. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And after that, he he. Every time I take off, I keep telling him, "Look, I can't open the hatch. I'll, I'll lose the vapor lock." And he just hangs on, hooky bobs. <laughs> He's hooky bobbing. <laughs> Is that a word? Hooky bob. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we used to hooky bob when we were kids, and it was snowy. And the bus would drop you off and you grab the bumper of the bus and you slide on your feet. Oh, yeah. That's hooky bobbing. That's I shouldn't be thing. telling kids that. Don't, don't try that at home, kids. <laughs> but yeah, we did everything like that when we were kids. We didn't care. <laughs>
All right. Thanks. I messed again. up your outro. So Pardon? it's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure for me too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I can't wait till the next time. Me too. Thank you. Right. Bye bye. Bye. All right. All right, friends. Well, that was sure a treat. Sure was a treat. Um, let's see here. I want to check the chat here. I want to thank Kathy for the super chat. I'm not sure if there were any other super chats, but thank you, Kathy, very, very much. Hello, Abby. How are you all doing today? Anne Marie, hello there. The phone is hilarious. Yes, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Steve is a great guy. He's a super, super nice guy. And it's, if you're curious about the previous shows we did, I did two other interviews with him. Just scroll back on my page, on the YouTube page and find the other ones. And uh, he's just a super nice guy. Um, he's the best. And he's a fantastic artist. Nice and early too. Yeah, um, uh, he had to do it early. So, so that's what we arranged to do it early like that. And I know that Dark Brain said that he couldn't make it because he had a class to do. And that's, that's, that's fine. I don't expect everybody to be here all the time. And, and Mud Rabbit, uh, if there's ever someone that you think would be a good mod to add, let me know, okay? You're welcome, Yo Yovanda. I got your email, Yovanda. And, oh, and uh, Dale D., I uh, have not mailed that stuff out yet, and Mud Rabbit as well. I'm I'm feeling a lot better now. So tomorrow, hopefully, with any kind of luck, I'll get all this stuff mailed out. All right? Yeah, great guest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, he's a great super guy. And boy, that uh, that graphic novel. What did you think of that artwork? Just spectacular, don't you think? Unbelievable. And he's such a nice guy, a super nice guy, you know? The kind of guy you want to have your neighbor. Hey, Anne Marie. Yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> la, 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 la. Oops. Yes. Hmm. Well, do that later. I'll do that later. Yes. Great guest. Hey, everyone. No worries, Aaron, at your convenience. There's no rush on my end. Okay. Terry Hafner. Hello there. He is brilliant. Yes, isn't he? No worries. Okay. He's painting my portrait. Oh, is he? And oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Don't forget to get that 10% discount. Tell me you saw it on the truth quest. Hey, Bruce Wayne. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Don't you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was a, a great, great interview. Yes. Hey, Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He's got the Batman symbol there and everything with the gray background as it should be. Yes. So he's painting your portrait. That's pretty exciting. And that's awesome. Yeah, he's really, really, really good. I mean, and, uh, you know, he's, he's been working on that book for quite a long time. Now that's going to be done and he's going to have lots of time to focus on all these other really cool personal projects, projects that, you know, 
when you hang this up in your living room or the living room where you give it to the people, it's going to be like an heirloom. It's not just a gift. It's an heirloom. So there you go. Oh, Catherine Weiss could be a, a mod. Yes. Well, that's a good idea. Hello, Peggy Dancer. I'll, I'll ask Kathy and see what she says. Would you like to be a mod, Kathy? So there you go. Yeah, I think she'd do a good job at that. Yeah, maybe we'll make her a, a mod, but I wanna get her input. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Peggy Dancer, we had Stephen Anthony Cefalo on today and he's a, a portrait artist and he's doing the Corey Goods graphic novel. It's almost finished, 120 pages. It's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. In fact, uh, I think I have that. Um, I think I have his, here it is. I'll put this up on the screen so you can see this. Here it is. So this gentleman was just on, for anyone who's uh, joining us late. And uh, so yeah, it's an exciting thing to have done, 120 pages, can you imagine? And look at the detail he put into all this. It's just incredible. It's uh, an amazing thing. I can't wait to get my copy. So um, it's disclosurecomics.com. It's also Stephen, Stephen Cefalo with a PH on Instagram and on uh, Stephen Anthony Cefalo on Facebook. So check him out. He's a great, great artist. And uh, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you. It's his, where did it go? It's his flyer his, uh, for his painting business. Oh gosh, I thought I had this right here. Hmm, don't know, it's all my files. So it should be here. And that's in it. It's not it. Yeah. Well, I'm working on some very interesting things for the Friday night show, folks. So I hope you can join us on the Friday night show. We'll probably be a little later. Maybe I'll come on a little early if that works for everybody. She said yes. Okay, let's make her uh, a mod. Catherine Weiss is now a moderator. There you go. I think it worked. Hey, Jacob Waters, how you doing? Yeah, he is quite the artist and if you get a painting done, a portrait, professional portrait painting done, you can get a whopping 10% off your purchase by mentioning TruthQuest. You heard it on TruthQuest with Aaron Moriarty. You get 10% off. And that's a, quite a big savings. On uh, it, it, It's amazing he would offer any discount. So there you go. He wants to get back into it into the painting portraits and you can help him do that 
and get a, an heirloom at the same time. So there you go. Something you can pass down and pass down and pass down. All right. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Copy that. So what did you guys think of all that art? What did you think of it? What did you think of it? Write it in the chat. Write it in the chat. And then we can uh, take a look at your comments. And hold on a second here, friends. Doing a little housekeeping. Doing a little housekeeping here. There we go. And one more thing. One more little thing. I hope you're all having a fine, fine evening. And I hope the fact that we're a little bit early tonight uh, didn't set anybody off too much. So there we go. It looks like that worked. Well, how do you like that? It was awesome artwork. Thank you, Mud Rabbit. Reminds me of Venom up the upper left. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Draco reptilian. That's one of the uh, white royals, uh, white, white royal Draco reptilians. They're 14 to 16 feet tall and just absolutely ferocious. And they have uh, an, a, a consciousness that's so advanced. He said it felt like they just grabbed his mind and just just, it was like mind rape. It was horrifying. He never wanted to, to interact with these beings ever again after this horrifying experience. Um, so yeah, it's just incredible. Um, pure evil. This is what we're up against, folks. This is what's behind all of this stuff. The people pulling the strings are these evil reptilians. And their, their puppets are a lot of the people that we see in the media and in politics. They're the ones doing the bidding of these creatures. So that's my opinion and the opinion of many others. Yes. Watermelephant, I like that name. Watermelephant X. Uh, just arrived, but the artwork is stunning. Yes, it is. And he's doing portraiture right now too. So he's offering a 10% off. So you want to get up high class, super awesome, realistic portrait of a person or a dog or a cat. He is the guy, the best I've ever seen. So that's, and a 10% off when you say truth quest with Aaron sent you. So there you go, there you go. All right, well, I think we're gonna put a cap on this a little early here, folks. I'm so glad that you all stopped by and thank you for liking and sharing. Oh, I'm gonna grab number 32. 32 is my lucky number. So when you smash that thumbs up, that's your lucky number. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for stopping by to the Truth Quest because it's at the Truth Quest where we're just down range of strange. Where the outrageous is contagious. And the paranormal is the new normal, the truth quest. Thank you very much. Join us again Friday night. Yes, come back Friday night. We're going to have some fun. We're going to explore some very interesting UFO 
cases that you will not believe. Some very, very interesting ones. They just came up across and you're gonna love it. And so wake the neighbors, tell your kids and uh, wake the dog because you're not gonna wanna miss this one. So come on, come on back on Friday. Remember, one, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, that's where you can come to the Truth Quest where we're just on Range of Strange, where the outrageous is contagious, and the paranormal is the new normal. Yes, the Truth Quest. Thank you again for coming along. I love it when you come into my spaceship, we can zip around the planets and have fun like this. And we're going to do it all again on Friday. I want to thank each and every one of you. You're very, very important. Please spread the word, share this, even after it's done. We love you. And give Stephen a call. Check out his Instagram, Stephen Safalo. So follow him. Keep that camera and that phone to the sky so you can take that picture and come on to the Truth Quest and talk about it. Until then, peace in. <laughs>